Okay, so let's say I want to change the color of this material. We can either change that in the native modeling software or we can go to the Enscape material editor, which is right next to the Enscape material library. We can actually change the concrete materials uh, through the Enscape material editor, which is right next to the Enscape material library. So I'm just going to click right here and then I'm just going to select it. And now you can see that there's all these new specifications that are coming up on the concrete material that we put earlier. Now to actually make the changes on the color, we can use this albedo section that we have right now. So I can add a tint color. Let's say I want to make it darker. I can just use a tint color to actually overlay it and it changes the color of the material that we had now. But we can also use all the available colors that are preset here. If you're looking for something more specific, you can go to the advanced tab and just choose a different kind of material. So for this instance, I want to keep it a little bit more lighter. And what is actually really useful here is is that if we can actually blend it well with the road material that we have here, that would be even better. So I'm going to try that out if we can apply the material from the road. So something like this, and maybe I can change the size of it or the rotation. That way it blends, as I said, with the road material. So let me just choose this one once again. And now it's going to blend in even better. I'm going to go into specifics on the materials and all of that will be later on. I'm just going to showcase you uh, some of the other Enscape material library materials that I use most often. So if I go to grounds right here and then I can just choose grass 04, which is basically um, the grass that I found that works best in Enscape. Enscape right now has a little bit of issues with grass sometimes, but if you do it correctly, it can look just fine. So I'm going to click grass 04 just like previously and then I can import the selection and then I'm just going to choose the surface where I want the grass applied. I'm going to click once and as you can see, the grass is already applied onto the section that we wanted it to. And now we're going to do the same in the other side. So I'm just going to double click on the group and then apply it once again right here. And as you can see, we already have the grass material applied to our image. Now, something that you can do with the grass material is that you can change the way that it acts on our scene. So if I choose the grass material, we can make the height a little bit higher. So let's say if that was what we needed, we wanted to look a little bit more hectic. We can do that. We can also change the height variation if you want to make it more irregular. But for now, I'm just going to go and put it back to the default settings that it has. What you can also notice is that once we applied and we went onto the grass material in the material editor, you can see that all of these other options are available for material types that would automatically put the best settings and optimization for the actual material. Now, uh, this was automatically selected for us because Enscape actually is able to identify materials through the naming of them. So let's say this grass material, I'm going to try and import another grass material, which is basically what I'm trying to show. So I'm going to go to grounds and then I will just choose grass 01. And uh, if I actually change the grass to let's say mirror, so I'm going to change the naming to mirror. This should work fine, hopefully, because it always works. So I'm just going to apply it right here but it still actually identifies it as grass since that is what we loaded up from the Enscape asset library. But uh, I'm going to show this with another instance. So for example, let's say these metal fences, I'm going to go ahead in the material library once again, and then I'm just going to go ahead at metals and I will choose the aluminum stainless steel option or maybe something a little bit more uh, worn or more irregular. So I'm going to choose iron 03 and then I can just go into the selection. I'm going to select all of them and apply it. And as you can see, it already identified it as iron. And as you can see, also, it has reflections and it does act metallic. So something that the Enscape material editor lets you also change is the roughness, the metallic, the reflections and all that. And for this instance, it has automatically optimized us the best settings for this fence. Now, this is very useful because as you can see, Enscape is probably the best software in terms of optimizing all the workflow for you. That way it, you can reach the final look as fast as possible. So I'm going to go back to the actual camera that we had earlier. And now I'm just going to go and apply some materials and actually get our scene more fixed up. So this is kind of the basics. I'm going to try and use the Enscape material library as much as I can. And then if we need something from external sources, we're going to go into the other websites that I mentioned earlier. Let's go to grounds. We don't need that. We can go to roads and then I will just choose road 04 and then I will apply it to the surface that we have here. Now, as you can see, it's heading in the wrong direction so I can double click once again and then I can change the positioning on something like this I make it a little bit larger I guess this would work fine and then I will select this 
and I will apply it onto the entrance of the house as well. I'm going to change the positioning of the texture. That way it doesn't show up those division lines that is showing up right now. We can change the size of it as well to blend in weather much better. This is like what I'm going to leave the grounds at. I'm going to actually apply another material onto the curbs of the sidewalk. So I'm going to go once again in the Enscape material library and then I'm going to choose concrete and I'm going to choose uh, let's say concrete 04 because I do like that it has some more textures to it. So I'm just going to apply it on the curbs over here as well and then on the other sidewalk too. So now I can do a little bit of modification on the existing materials, but I also want to apply some materials on this part of the house as well. So I'm just going to select them all, apply the concrete material that we did earlier, and then I will also apply the steel material or uh, the iron material on the other fences. Let me select it once again, because it seems like I didn't select it correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the material once again on this side. Okay. So now all of them have iron material. I'm going to do the same off for the other fences over here for the ones on the back as well. You don't want to make sure that you don't leave out any of these little details because they do make a difference at the end of the day for all renders. So let me just choose this concrete material once again, and I'm going to apply it onto some other parts. And then I think we're going to be pretty much done with applying most of the materials. We do need to add some water on the kind of outlines of the house that we have here. So let me just apply it here as well. And then we're just gonna need to actually optimize the materials that we already have here. I'm gonna go ahead and add the concrete material on the sides of the water that we're gonna be putting on here. I'm just going to go ahead and go on the SketchUp material library. I'm gonna click water and I will just choose the water pool. I'll just add this. And as you can see, Enscape has already detected and identified that this is a water material and it has all the water settings already set up for us uh, ready to use so let's go back to the camera one what i do feel like we need to make changes on is some of the materials that we already have set up here now i want to make the enscape tab a little bit bigger because i do want to be able to see the materials more clearly so i'm going to choose first off the sidewalk material i usually like to apply and change material from ground up it doesn't really make any difference it's just a personal preference so so we did add some bump maps onto the material that we have here so as you can see this will kind of make it look a little bit more 3d maybe this is just a little bit too much but i also want to change the roughness section so just to go real quick onto all of the material editor settings so over here it's more to do with uh, the input of the map that we actually feed sketchup and enscape to use and then we can change the color and the way that it appears over here most of the time but then if you want to add depth and make it look even more realistic this section is very important so we can either add bump maps which actually i do go more in depth on all of the different options and how to use them in the 14 day realistic rendering course which is in the link in the description but for this instance i'm going to use only the bump map that way i also don't waste a lot of time in this live stream so if i go closer to this i can just turn this up and as you can see see it's going to become more and more 3d is going to add depth to it now i can also change the roughness so right now it's a 90 percent, but i can lower it down to let's say 40 and basically what the roughness is it basically changes the reflection that the material has so if i leave the roughness lower the material is going to reflect more if i leave it a little bit higher it's not going to reflect as much for this instance i'm just going to leave it at 60 percent because that's how i found most of the time that it actually works best. So let's go back to our view here. Something else that I just noticed, let me just apply the material onto the interior surfaces of these walls. So something like this, and then on the other one as well. Because over here, I plan to do some vegetation once we get to the asset library. Now we're gonna go ahead and do some configuration on this concrete material. Let's lower the roughness on that as well. Let's also turn on the bump map on this one. We're gonna do the same for the bricks that we have here. Now for the bricks, I usually like to use a displacement map. So as you can see, I'm clicking on use albedo most of the time because what the use albedo option actually does is that it takes all the input from the raw texture that we have here. And then it uses that to create a displacement map when you don't already have one imported on your computer. So I'm just going to click use albedo. And then I'm just going to turn this on even more. And as you can see, it's going to add more depth to other brick material that we have here it does look more raw and i believe it looks more realistic now let's take a look onto the glass material the glass material does look a bit too transparent so maybe we change the color of it and uh, we add a little bit more specular options so what the specular option is basically how much is going to reflect i'm going to leave it a little bit higher because we don't have the interior modeled so that will kind of hide 
away from uh, that. But other than that, we're just going to leave the glass like that as of now. And then we also need to do some tweaking on the wood material here. And let's just turn down the roughness to 40% and then uh, also add a bit of a bump map, maybe 1.5. We're going to get closer to it to actually see how it's made the changes i think this works just fine now these parts i think are supposed to be metallic uh, structures but right now they don't look very realistic so i'm going to go ahead and select that in the sketchup tab and then i will just use the metallic slider i will do 100 so basically the metallic slider when you have a metallic material like we have right now you always want to have it at 100 and then the roughness let's lower it a little bit and now as you can see it reflects more it does look more like iron which as you can see from the naming it is supposed to be iron and it is supposed to be a little bit as it says dirty or a little bit older i do not like the look of too much add-on in terms of the dirt so i'm just gonna fade it away with the image fade option and then i'm gonna add a tint color to something a little bit more dark gray and as you can see it looks much more balanced as of now now i'm gonna do the same for the roof because this needs to be metallic as well so i'm gonna do it 100 and then make the roughness at 30 which seems a little bit too much so let's go at 50 and now it seems a little bit more balanced in terms of that as well now this is kind of most of the materials i tried to cover as much options as possible within this section of course we're going to go later on to the materials as well on the final stages because there's always going to need to be more modifications because there's going to be changes on terms of how the materials look after we add on lighting and more advanced stuff but as of now i'm just going to leave the materials section as it is right now i also want to show you some of the websites that i use to actually get materials from so these are my three uh favorite websites which all of them have free materials for you to use so it's a uh, texture box uh, you can find different materials that you can download you can click on wood let's say and then you can choose whatever material that you want and then just download it straight away and then the other one that i like a lot and i use most of the time is the ambientcg.com website so just in case we wanted to actually download a material let's say i wanted to download a concrete material so we're just going to go ahead and click concrete and then as you can see there's going to be a lot of different options that we can choose from which is always good because there's more specific things that we can search for in our projects so let's say i wanted to download this concrete material you will have available all of the maps for it to import on the Enscape material editor and the raw albedo map so right here you can choose the actual resolution that you want it from i usually recommend to uh, depending on how much your computer can handle in terms of uh, different levels of complexity i would always recommend you to get a higher resolution material for closer ups and then for materials that are far away maybe choose something even lower because you won't be able to see all of the little details in there so this is just to actually showcase to you where you can get materials if you want to go that extra step as i said you can always go through the 14 day realistic rendering program and learn all of this stuff in detail from the link in the description okay so this is kind of it in terms of some of the main and basic stuff with materials now we're going to move on to the lighting section so lighting is one of the most important and kind of the trickiest part in terms of getting your renders to look realistic but enscape is just a lot swifter because the workflow is just amazing at least for me so i'm going to go ahead and choose the view right here and then now we're going to go through some of the lighting settings now in my opinion the default enscape sun intensity is just so high so 80 percent is just too high and we're going to go to 10 percent. this will make the image a little bit more balanced if you want more contrast you can go with 20 even 30 if that's what you want but uh, this is a lot more balanced this is just one of the ways that we can do uh the balancing of the sun and shadows and all of that if you want to change the direction of the sun you can always just hold down the shift key and then the right click on your mouse and then just move it horizontally and as you can see we can go to nighttime we can also change the direction of the sun together with the shadows uh, as it appears right now so uh, if you want to make a different look let's say to cast the sun from this side we can always uh, use it like this now some of the other options that make a big part and a make difference on uh, this stuff is if we go to the sky options we can make the clouds density a lot higher so this would actually block the sun and it just has a different moody look i don't usually use this so we're just going to keep it at default we can also make a different variety of clouds if you want more variety we can just go to 100 if you want them to look uh, more similar we can just tone that down we can also change the amount of these little clouds that are uh, around the 
big ones uh, with the slider right here and then the contrails and all of that. If you want to change only the sky positioning or the cloud positioning and not the actual sun direction, you can always use the longitude and latitude option that we have here. So something like this. I always wondered on how I can get the dirt on the ground to be realistic, a bit, a bit of greenery grass with dirt. You'll have the dirt material and the material library from Enscape. That is not super hard to get right. However, I do believe that there needs to be some irregularities in terms of applying the grass onto the ground area of the render. These are kind of the basics of actually doing exterior lighting. I mean, it's nothing too complicated as I said, but this is not what I use for my renders. This is not the workflow that I use. I use 99% of the time I use something called AZRIs. So basically what AZRIs are, uh, I have repeated this so many times in other videos as well, but I just don't see enough people actually using them in Enscape, especially when they're starting out. So what AZRI are is basically images that you can just import onto your Enscape window and it just wraps around your whole model and they were taken in real life. So just that alone is enough for you to convince them that it's going to be looking much more realistic than the default generic sky in Enscape. Where I usually get my AZRIs from is polyhaven.com. By the way, all of these websites for resources, I do not have any affiliation with or or I'm not sponsored by them in any way. I'm just showing you what I use on my day-to-day -day rendering workflow. So here you can download many different AZRIs or images that you can import to actually improve the lighting in your scene. Now you can also find different categories like natural light, cloudy, urban, and all of that. I mean, the AZRIs are not only for lighting, they're also very useful for background views. So for example, if you want to have an urban area show up, that is very useful. Enscape does have some default AZRIs that you can use. So for example, at source right here, you can use desert. As you can see, there's a desert in the background now. You can use forest, mountains, and all of that, but they're just not as high quality as just importing the ones that I find online. So if I go to AZRIs, let's say I want to apply an AZRI that looks something like this. So I just can click it. And then over here, you want to make sure that you have the AZRI option selected and not the EXR option. And then I can just click download. And then once that downloads to actually import it onto the Enscape tab, you can just click the visual setting we can go to sky as you can see we use skybox and then we just click this load skybox from file and then whenever or wherever you have downloaded the azri online you can just click it and as you can see with one click the azri is going to be applied onto our scene now something that i want you to keep in mind is that this is not final and there's going to be a lot more changes that are going to go into the final image that we have here so to actually make the azri much better is the option that we have here brightest point as sun direction so what enscape does it basically detects the brightest point that is in our azer eyes which is in this instance the one right here and then wherever that point is going to be in the azer eye that is going to be the direction from which the sun comes from so if i click right here you can see that the direction of the sun changed immediately and now to actually change the time of day or the direction of the sun we cannot use the option that i showed you earlier with the shift key and the right click on the mouse instead we would have to use the rotation right here so as you can see as the azer eye rotates the sun direction is going to rotate as well now let's say i want to keep uh, the azure eye to something a little bit like this i'm just going to keep it like this and as you can see the background is much better the sky looks much more balanced and they just make the images way better than default so this is kind of almost all that you need for making your lighting much more realistic i mean there's some final settings that i would do for lighting but this just makes it on a whole different level rather than the default landscape sky some other settings that we can take a look at to actually make the exterior lighting better is over here at the atmosphere section we can also change the shadow sharpness so i myself always like to have the lighting a little bit softer so the shadow sharpness actually uh, if you go closer to the shadows that we have here we can see the difference so the higher the shadow sharpness is the harsher the sun is going to appear but if i actually lower it down which what i usually do is i just leave it at let's say five percent uh, i want it as much to blend in with the rest of the modeling as possible is going to look much softer and much balanced at least from my perspective so this is kind of going to be the most of work that needs to be done with artificial or just lighting in general there's some other stuff that goes into lighting to actually make it look much more perfect as i said i don't want to waste too much time on everything every little detail in this master class because i do cover everything that has to do with enscape and just to get you to realistic level in the 14 day realistic rendering course in the link in the description if you're interested in that make sure to join that right now so we're going to move on to the asset library and now 
I'll just move on to the asset library. Now the asset library, the Enscape asset library is filled up with many very realistic and high quality assets. I'm going to go ahead and open it up in the SketchUp tab, but we can do that in two different ways. So for example, we can open it up right here from the toolbar and then we can also change it from the asset library that we have here in the Enscape tab. But we're first gonna take a look at the Enscape asset library from the SketchUp tab. So first off, what I would like to do is I would like to add a little bit of vegetation on our scene. Now there's, as I said, two different ways that we can add this is to the Enscape asset library in the SketchUp tab and then in the Enscape tab. Previously, the Enscape asset library wasn't available within this Enscape tab. So I still sometimes add uh, vegetation and all of that from the SketchUp tab because I'm just more used to it because I've used it that way longer. But I am kind of seeing the advantage of using the Enscape asset library within the Enscape tab right now. So, okay, so I'm gonna go at the Enscape asset library right here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and find vegetation first. So I'm gonna click on categories. And as you can see, there's uh, different types of categories that we have here. The one that we're interested right now in is the vegetation category. So now I also want to change and only see trees vegetation later on. We're going to look at some bushes and some other stuff like that. So to actually change that, we can just click on tags and just click on tree. Once we click on tree, I'm going to go ahead and choose this option right here. So I'm just going to choose this tree and just showcase to you how we can place them on our modeling. So uh, let's say I want this tree uh, somewhere around, let's say on kind of the back of the building there and then one over here. I can just use it, click it. I can just click apply changes. And then once we click apply changes, they're going to be inside our modeling. So as you can see, if I go back to the view that we had here, the trees are already applied. Now I would also like to apply a tree onto the view kind of to make a framing a little bit of the composition. But for that instance, that is why I like to use the SketchUp asset library from Enscape. That way I already have the view set up here. I can make changes and walk around and move around the model without changing the composition that we set up earlier. So I'm going to go to the Enscape asset library. We're going to go to vegetation. I'm going to go to trees once again, and then I'm just going to choose similar to what we had earlier. It doesn't matter if it's not the same one. So if I choose this one, I'm just going to click right here and then I'm going to try and frame it up perfectly onto the composition that we have. So I'm going to move it a little bit like this. I can move this a little bit upwards a little bit more to the right, maybe a little bit downwards now to the left and something like this. So this just kind of adds a little bit more depth to the composition. And then uh, we're just going to keep on adding more and more objects to uh, fill up the scene that we have here. So I'm going to go ahead in the Enscape asset library once again. And this is uh, very interesting because I see a lot of people use very high quality assets all the time, but they just don't fit with the rest of the scene. So make sure you always have appropriate kind of vegetation within uh, the terrain and all the setting of your house or building. Uh, so now I'm just going to go ahead and apply a tree, let's say on the side of the house here and just move it a little bit forward. Uh, maybe something taller because I don't like the one. It just doesn't stand out as much as I wanted to. So maybe I can just go ahead and choose, uh, let's say this one. So something like this looks a little bit better. And then we're just going to need to also add some more context to the surroundings on the this part right here. So let's say that would be a neighboring house. We do have have a lot of options in the Enscape asset library to import neighboring house and just context all around to our building. So we're just going to go to street props and then at street props, we can just scroll down and then we can just choose a house that kind of fits with the actual house that we have right now, but that is not super necessary because it's just going to be filled up with these trees anyway. And then we can also add something in the back here. So let's say I just choose something a little bit more contemporary. So let me just choose this one and I'll just add it over there on the back. And as you can see, it's giving more context to the, all of the surroundings and all that. So maybe a little bit more forward. We're going to add some trees onto this house as well. And the whole composition is going to have a huge change after we do this. So now, uh, let's try to add some bushes into the front fence here and just add some more variations with the landscape. We're going to continue and try to add some more variation onto the landscape. Now I want to go ahead in the Enscape asset library. Once again, I'm going to choose vegetation and now I want to use a tag of bushes. So I'm going to select, let's say this one, I'm just going to place one of each and then we're going to use a combination of a few of them. So I'm going to use that one. And then I also would like to use something like 
this and move it a little bit closer. And then I'm also going to want to use something a little bit, a bit more colorful. So let's save this one. This one I'm going to keep on this part right here. And then I'm going to add some taller bushes and a little bit taller vegetation on that side as well. And then uh, over here, I'm just going to add like maybe a rosemary bush or something like that. So something like that. So just apply there and then copy this onto this side. Okay, so this is a very cool bushes that as well that we can use here. I want to use something more bold on this side of the composition. We cannot see that right now, so maybe we just apply it somewhere around here which works just as fine. This is just to kind of show what the Enscape Asset Library has to offer because as you can see, the fencing is blocking a lot of the vegetation that we're importing, but the actual composition is already coming into fruition a lot more than it was previously. We can do a little bit more changing on the vegetation because I'm not happy with how it looks right now, but these are kind of just to show you all of the options and all of the features that we can use with Enscape. Now I'm gonna make the Enscape window a little bit smaller and then I just want to add some vehicles because Enscape does have some very good options with the asset library. That way you don't have to go online and import different models, especially with BIM software. It's very time consuming to try and find models online. So, so for example, we can just import, uh, let's say this car right here, or even something different if you wanted to, but let's just keep it, uh, this car, which is going to import it right there. I want to rotate it on this side. Maybe it does look a little bit better like that. I'm just going to try and find some more options with another vehicle on the back here. That would look fine as well. That is included in the example that I have from the sketch of modeling. So let's just put a truck there. And then I'm going to show you that how we can also change the color of the adjustable assets. So this is a new feature in Enscape, which basically lets you change the colors of the assets that we have here. So if I just click on the car and then I go right here, we can change the color that the car emit so let's say i want to make it black i can just click on it and now i can just apply changes and the car is black but i think it looks better in gray it just it just in black is just too emphasized so we're just going to leave it like that now one thing that i'm not very happy with is obviously vegetation and of this front part right here. I mean, we can add some potted plants in the front, or maybe we can also add some more kind of vegetation on the side right here. Right now, we're just gonna take a look at that and see how we can make this even better. So the two things that we need to, as I said, focus on right now is the ground materials that we have here, as well as the vegetation. So I'm gonna go ahead in the vegetation section once again, and now I'm just gonna choose something that we can just put uh, on the front here, but I would also like to make it larger. Uh, something else that we can do is we can just move the fence uh, behind the actual bushes. So we can just move it like this because this is not really helping with the composition that I'm trying to achieve. I mean, I do have freedom in changing that in the live stream because this is not a real project. Maybe sometimes in your projects, you don't have this kind of freedom and obviously that sucks, but you kind of have to adapt on what you need to achieve. So I'm going to try and import this bush as well. So something like this. Maybe I take off this rosemary bush. Maybe it's just too much. And then I move it all of the other assets closer to this. So right now I just want to do the same thing on this side of the composition as well. And then maybe I want to do add some medium height trees on the sides right here. Maybe I just need to add some medium sized trees on the sides right here. So if I scroll down a little bit and now I just choose, let's say this option right here, this can work fine. Maybe we can change the leaves or add a variation onto this one. Uh, let me check if there's anything closer to that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose something that is not too large because we definitely don't need that. Maybe this one, that one is an autumn tree. Let me just check. So let's try this one. This one seems fine. I can also change the size of it manually. So something like this is all right. And then this one, let's try and maybe change the actual tree leaves. Maybe it adds a little bit of contrast. I know I said earlier that we need to have them as appropriate to the surroundings as possible. But as of now, I believe the vegetation looks much more better than it did previously. I want to add some potted plants over here as well. That would just make the whole thing much better. So let me just go ahead on the Enscape library. Once again, we're gonna go to vegetation. Let's just scroll up. I also wanted to do some ivy. So, I mean, this is a vine, so it's not ivy leaves or whatever, but let me just check this. I'm a little bit forward and it does add some variation onto the concrete. It does kind of break up the very monotone look that the concrete has us now. So uh, that works fine. And then if I can also find something from the ground up, so maybe from this and move it up to here, I'll choose this and apply it onto the surfaces. Okay, so now I do want to add some potted plants. As I said earlier, I'm gonna go ahead here and then I'm just going to try and find something that fits with the scene that we have. Let's try and add maybe something like this. 
If this is an interior plan, no. Okay. Uh, okay, that can work. And then we can also uh, work with this one. So I'll just add it here. And then some of them a little bit more onto the exterior. So let's see something a bit larger, something a bit more bold in that sense. Well, let's just try this one as well. So maybe two or three, maybe something that is larger, maybe a few that are a little bit smaller. I do want some that are a little bit wider. So maybe this works to make it a little bit larger and then we just keep it. Let's just try this one because I think this just looks uh, way better than what we had previously. And then let's just try another small potted tree. So let me scroll down and just add this one. Now, one thing that I also said that I wanted to change is the concrete material or the ground material that we had here. But I just want to check if there is some other stuff that I want to do with the vegetation. And then there's also a bit of changes that I want to do with the composition as well. But we can just take a look at that a little bit later on. So, OK, so I, I think I think the vegetation looks fine now. I don't want to add too many stuff. In fact, I'm just going to take off this potted plant completely. And then I'm just going to try and find a better material for this part of the entrance. So let me just go add grounds or uh, concrete. Let me check if there's any concrete tiles that can work there. So I'll scroll down a little bit, but nothing too good. Maybe I'll go back to concrete once again and then just choose a different type of concrete. So maybe uh, this grainy one. I mean, this does look a little bit better and maybe I just leave this one like this and then I add some tiles on this front part that do look more fitting with the scene. Let me go back to tiles once again. And then maybe I just use these ones and then I change the color to match uh, with the, the slope part. I also would like to make them bigger. So something like this. And then I go to the Enscape Material Library. I mean, I just click on the uploads, but Enscape Material Library. And then I just change the tint color to something a little bit lighter. And something like this works much better in my opinion. Now, something else that I would like to add is I want to add some curtains on this part. And on this window as well, because uh, you can see too much of the interior and the interior is not modeled. Okay, so let's just try and add some curtains. So I'm gonna go in the asset library once again, I'm gonna type in curtain and then at the accessories and then let's just try and use this one. So I'm, as I said, I'm gonna put two different curtains. I mean, curtains on two different parts. So the window on the entrance here, let me just move this a little bit upwards and then I'll just change the scale of it to larger. Uh, maybe something like this and then just to kind of make it seem like there's something inside. Maybe this is a bit too picky, but I'll just add some furniture. So maybe let's say a sofa. I think that can work. Let me just scroll down a little bit and go to a sofa. I'll just put it here and then I can rotate it and see how it fits better. Okay, that's great. Yeah, I I'm glad I'm glad we got that story out. So let's go and just put a painting on the wall as well. I mean, this is these are some details, but uh, sometimes I like to fill in some of the blanks that can be seen on the interior. Maybe I have to move it a little bit more onto the right. Okay, so it's more onto the left. Okay, so this does look a little bit, it does look like there's at least something inside. And then I'm just gonna add the current over here as well. Maybe this I move onto the side as well. Okay, so now I think uh, the rendering has come to life much better than it was previously. Obviously there's steps that we need to take to actually go for the final image. And sometimes people are not happy with the initial phase that there are with the rendering and they just give up completely. At least that's with beginners. But as long as you trust the process and you know what you're doing with all of the different phases. So at least for me, the four main or five main phases, as I like to call them in the steps that I take for rendering, uh, which is composition materials, the asset library lighting, and then the final visual settings. If you know what you're doing in each one of them, you can always combine them. And then the final image is going to look better. Not saying that this one is perfect, but it's definitely much better than what we had in the beginning. And it's kind of just a way to showcase all of the different options that Enscape has. And now what I would want to do is maybe I'll just move the field of view a little bit closer. So I keep it a little bit smaller. And then now we're going to take a look at all of the visual settings. The first thing we want to move the rendering quality up to ultra. And then all of the other settings don't need too much changes as of now. Always keep the rendering quality up to ultra, at least well, that's what I do in my projects. But in case you do not have a super powerful computer, make sure you maybe throughout the process, you keep it a little lower. And then when it's time to actually do the rendering, you just turn it up to the highest amount that your computer can handle. So at the image section, I'm just going to try and do auto contrast. This works fine, I guess. Uh, it does have some more contrast. So auto contrast works fine most of the times. But the saturation in Enscape, at least for me, the default settings are a bit too low. So I try to keep it a little bit more higher. So maybe 105 works fine for me. And then uh, the color temperature, I want to have it a little bit colder. So if I go on the left, the image will look a little bit more colder. If I go, I mean, on the right, it will look colder. And then if I go on the left, it's going to look a little bit warmer. 
I like to keep it for this image at something like this. This obviously all of these settings are not set in stone for all of your projects. As I said, you have to adapt to uh, what kind of project you have and all of that stuff. So uh, now all of the effects here, I never use any of them. I always leave them at zero. Uh, maybe the vignette sometimes to make it a little bit more dramatic and just add a little bit of framing. But even this, I don't like to overdo it. I just leave it at default even when I'm trying to use them. So. Uh, just for the sake of it, I'm just going to leave it on uh, for this live stream. Now, at the atmosphere settings, we can add some fog. This is good to actually emphasize the building more if you can actually direct it more on to the surroundings. But I can just leave this off as of now or maybe a little bit lower. That way, it's just not, it just doesn't appear way too much. The night sky brightness, we don't need that as of now. The sun brightness, we can always change it. We can do it higher or lower. I believe uh, the way we had it earlier at 15% works fine for the image that we have here. It kind of does look like an early morning or uh, maybe even kind of a bit of a sunset, but more more so an early morning, at least from my perspective. And then the other settings right here are not super useful for the image that we have here. If we had an interior image, the ambient brightness and artificial light brightness would work fine, or even if we had lights and exteriors, but we don't have that as of now. Now the sky settings, I just want to actually just keep it something really brief in terms of the HDR eyes. So you can also change the brightness of the sky and the laser eye that you imported. But keep in mind that the higher that the brightness will be, the lower the contrast between the sun and the actual laser eye will be. So in this instance, I just worked with it at default and this is what we kind of had. Maybe I can turn it up just a little bit to lower down the, the actual contrast between the sunlight and the laser eye. And then this is just going to be pretty much it in terms of the visual settings. Now for the final rendering, I'm just going to leave the way everything is right now at default. As I said, I don't want to go into too much depth in terms of aspect ratio and all of that. And then I'm just going to click uh, rendering and I'm just going to save it on uh, my desktop right here. 